All right, I have a little idea here with this wobble base on it, and it's something that needs some calories, I must say. I've got to add some beef to this, so we're gonna do it using an analog outboard MIDI synthesizer. Here's my idea. Okay, so I want that exact MIDI line going out of Ableton, out of the computer, and into the mighty Waldorf Microwave EXT, Vintage 1987. So, how to? The easiest thing, if you're just starting out on something like this, is to, first of all, verify your connections. So, in this diagram, you can see that I've got the computer up here in the corner, and if you've never done it, you want to go out of the MIDI interface and into the MIDI inputs of this, and then MIDI out to the inputs of your set device. This way you create a circle of information, MIDI information. And then of course, you need to have a pair of stereo cords that you've checked and verified running out of this and into your audio interface, which in my case is the same. Can't verify that this synthesizer that you're using, whatever you're gonna use, is set to receive MIDI on channel one. And in my case, the indicator light will show up here if I've got that, okay? So the first thing I want to do is just go to the instrument area of my browser. And you might have wondered what this external instrument is. It's named appropriately, obviously. I'm just going to drag it in. And what it is is just a little junction box. And it's going to say, I want MIDI to go. And if your MIDI interface is here, with actual MIDI cords, not just USB, but MIDI outputs, um, it's gonna show up here, and sure enough, it does, okay? And the reason it does is because I have it configured. I already did it, but here's how I've got it. Um, under my MIDI sync tab, um, I've got the profile sending and receiving, sending and receiving, okay? These items in here, underneath are have to do with sending pulse and clock. So in the instance of uh, wanting to control an external drum machine, you would want to verify and look at these settings. Um, and based on what kind of a machine it is, it's if it's music, it's likely going to be this. If it's film related, it's likely going to be this. Okay. And then again in here, way beyond the scope of what we're doing here, but if you were working two picture and you had to slave Ableton to some bigger machines on a dubbing stage, uh, you'd want to set this to receive the frame rate of the movie. Too much information there for this situation. And then on the output here, there's a difference between song and pattern, but again, you're going to have to do your homework on your device to see what kind of clock it's sending and receiving. And if it doesn't sync, just play around until it does but nobody's going anywhere unless sync is on. Okay, the minute I put sync on, it establishes that it is sitting and receiving clock. Okay, and in the case of my synthesizer, Ableton Live will send clock. We're gonna see a dashed yellow light go here with the beat of the song, but mine doesn't return clock because it's not a start stop kind of a beatbox sort of a device. Okay, that's done. Now, in here, audio's got to come out of that box for me to hear it. So I have it set and plugged into Audio 3.4. And I can configure this, obviously. And inputs, I have set to just record on 3 and 4. Okay, you've got these options. This sends out stereo. So wherever it's plugged in, make that green. All right, I'm going to just option drag this MIDI over here and we're gonna hear this. Okay, so first thing first, I wanna make it louder. So, methinks I'd like to record that. Command T gives me the channel. I 
microwave EXT and IO is coming in on external and that external is 3, 4 and that's in fact what it is. So I get my mixer back. I'm going to deassign it because I don't want to hear it. And I'm going to record. All right, and that is my audio. And it's still a bit low, so most likely I'd have to fix that on the master volume on the synthesizer. Also, um, here in the external instrument, when I go to this clip here, I can, in fact, um, turn this off, and I can change patches here. And keep in mind that there is some timing adjustments here. And then the other thing you might run into is that a lot of times these synthesizers have arpeggiators. And remember how we talked about clock. If you get patches that don't sync up, like we just heard me scroll through a few that didn't sync, you want to verify that you're sending clock. See this? Okay, you want to verify your sending clock. That's Ableton sending clock. And then you want to spend, you know, two weeks to figure out this little window here to see if it's going to receive clock. Believe me, using Ableton is a lot easier than using these. I've had 20 or 30 of these at one time at, back in the day. All right, so that is um, recording using or sending MIDI out using the external instrument. And a quick word about channels, MIDI channels. Here is the number of channels that it has, 16. And this is so that, you know, you could get 16 different tracks of things out of one box. Okay, that's how they used to work. That's how we used to work. Um, but in this case, we have unlimited channels and all of it. So we don't have to worry about tracks or anything like that. But channel one, and just easy enough to send yours on channel one. All right, next is doing the same thing with an iPad. 